Hello, and thank you for joining this American Journal of Managed Care program titled, A Review of the New Classes for the Treatment of Type 2 Diabetes. As diabetes is a progressive disease, it is a continued challenge for physicians to provide adequate control of patients' diabetes. When new agents with novel mechanisms of action become available, they help reduce the burden in the management of diabetes. Today, we're going to review these novel agents in the treatment plan for glycemic control and discuss their role in patients with and without cardiovascular disease. I'm Dr. Peter Salgo. I'm a professor of medicine and anesthesiology at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons, and I'm associate director of surgical intensive care at New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm delighted to tell you that participating today on our panel are Dr. Om Ganda, medical director of the Lipid Clinic and chair of the Clinical Oversight Committee at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Jim Kenney, founder and president of J.T. Kenney, LLC. He's here from Waltham, Massachusetts. And Dr. Helena Rudbard, past president of the American College of Endocrinology and past president of the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists. She's here from Rockville, Maryland. I want to thank all of you for joining us. This is going to be great. Why don't we begin with something very basic. Let's talk about pathophysiology, diabetes, and specifically type 2 diabetes. What are we dealing with? We are really dealing with a progressive disease. It's a disease that's just exploding throughout the world. It's basically characterized by high blood glucose levels. So that's a very simplistic explanation. But you know, it sounds simple, but when we, we're gonna start digging into this. Very complex, and we are very fortunate that nowadays we have a plethora of new medications better forms to diagnose and to treat our patients with type 2 diabetes. Now, in, this, in this country alone, we have over 30 million people with diagnosed diabetes, and about 80 million with pre-diabetes. We're gonna get into that too. But before we start, let's just make the distinction. I know it sounds simple, it may not be. Distinguish between type two and type one diabetes. Very different diseases, they ultimately both diseases, type 1 and type 2, are characterized by high blood glucose levels. However, people with type 2 diabetes start out with insulin resistance. So their pancreases are still producing insulin, and in fact, they may actually be overproducing insulin. Different from people with type 1, which is an autoimmune disease in which the beta cells of the pancreas have lost their ability to produce insulin. You know, again, it sounds simple, but when I was in medical school, when pterodactyls flew through the air, that wasn't so clear. Type two was called adult onset, type one was juvenile onset, yes. and it was just an age thing. It's, a, it's two different diseases. It is totally different, and in fact, a lot of people with type two diabetes are being misdiagnosed, and vice versa, people with type one diabetes just because they are younger, they are being labeled people with type 2 diabetes that are younger are being mislabeled as having type 2 diabetes. So, so age is no longer criteria. Age is not the issue. No. So there are older people with type 1, younger people with type 2, different diseases, and you can get them at different ages. Exactly right. Age See, there's is overlap, no longer huh? criteria. I told you this was complicated. All right. Let's talk about the microvascular and the macrovascular complications now of type 2 because I think everybody associates type 1 with all these horrendous changes, but type 2 is not off the hook. No, not at all. Uh, you know, the, the complications of diabetes are really what causes havoc in people with diabetes. So we have two major types of complications. Microvascular, that includes retinopathy, nephropathy, now known as CKD, or chronic kidney disease, uh, and neuropathy both peripheral and autonomic. So these complications are not different from what we see in type 1 diabetes. They occur in all kinds of diabetes. Uh, hyperglycemia and how long we've had these complications. Okay, let me ask yeah. a difficult, if not impossible, question. If these are two distinct diseases, each characterized by hyperglycemia, and yet they converge on their vascular complications, why? Right. So I think it's the pathophysiology as we began to address. Long-term hyperglycemia over a period of years will cause certain changes that lead to not only microvascular changes, but some other metabolic changes that lead to these microvascular complications. But let me just uh, add that as far as the cardiovascular complications are concerned, or macrovascular complications, as you said, again, there are three kinds. Cardiovascular complications include coronary artery disease, strokes, and peripheral vascular disease. 
Now, these are not unique to diabetes, unlike microvascular complications. They get aggravated in the presence of diabetes, not only hyperglycemia, but other major risk factors, uh, high cholesterol, particularly LDL cholesterol, other lipids, and hypertension. So there are, are fellow the travelers that are coming Absolutely. along. That's a complicated disease. It's a very complicated disease. Cool.